Now, a lot of the book is focused on your relationship um, with, with Nelson Mandela, de yes. Klerk. You're going back between um, uh, Margaret Thatcher and, and the government here. Um, and you touch on this on the book, but did Mar Margaret Thatcher think Nelson Mandela was a terrorist? No. She, you, know, the, the, you, you still read articles saying mm -hmm. that Thatcher called Mandela a terrorist. She never called, it's just not factually correct, she never called Mandela a terrorist. She, um, Thatcher, I mean, I told her all about Mandela before she met him, but Thatcher, being female like yes. you, doesn't, didn't really believe anything until she met the person herself. You know, she wanted to meet him herself and I see like what he that. was really like. Mm -hmm. You know, anyhow, after 15 minutes with Mandela, you know, you could see her thawing, you know, this extremely impressive, very courteous, old world, you know, charm, obvious integrity, magnanimity, not, not interested in his own mm -hmm. interests at all, only in, you know, piece of that. From, you know, she was immensely impressed, as everybody was. And, you know, if you read her memoirs, she says, I warmed to him. I thought that how lucky South Africa was to have two remarkable people, <coughs> Mandela and de Klerk, who yeah. had made the changes, uh, you know, to, uh, got Mandela out of jail and so on. So she was, she was very pro-Mandela. She was more skeptical about the ANC because she thought the ANC was full of communists, <laughs> which at the time it was, yeah. by the way. Uh, and it, uh, you know, necklace in collaborator, she didn't like that. There was a threat at one point to attack British companies in South Africa wow. made by an ANC spokesman. Now, all the ANC leaders told me he had no business making that comment, but yeah. she reacted badly to that, absolutely. Well, now, very early on, the book, early on in the book, you say that there were two Mandelas. Yes. Can you tell us about these two Mandelas that you experienced? Absolutely. I mean, m everybody portrays Mandela as some kind of a saint, you know. And mm -hmm. actually, he was much more interesting than that. <laughs> <laughs> and he would, he, he would just laugh himself at any idea that he was a saint. You know. But uh, he, what he did when he came out of jail, he, he made hard-line statements, you know, which he told me, that's for the party faithful. You know, uh, these are hardline partisan statements written for him. You know, by the ANC um, colleagues and so on. Right. Uh, and he would he would appear to be totally inflexible in these statements. And he said to me, you know, I have to take my people with me. And he knew that you know the township youth had much more radical ideas than he did. So did some of his own colleagues. Uh, you know, when I would see him after one of these. Uh, statements, he would, he would say to me, you know, please tell the clerk that I need help on this or that or the other, or he would ask us for help on this or that or the other. And every single time he said to me, I am going to reach agreement with the clerk. Uh, and, you know, he had to do this. I mean, he had right. to do this to keep his, his own followers uh, aligned behind him. Um, and he, you know, he was extremely crafty, wily, and his, his whole technique, by the way, which nobody seems to remember anymore, was inclusiveness and co-option. You know, he started with his warder in jail, who ended up as his cook and butler. Right. His next was the justice minister, who used to rush up to me and ask my help getting him released. Next, one of the next was me. He kept saying to me, you know, in front of other people, you're my advisor. You know, what do you advise? You may be working for Thatcher, but you're my advisor, and so on. Next target was Thatcher. You know, he, wow. he didn't want to fight with Thatcher. How do I get her on my side? We had a rehearsal for the meeting. And I said, you can be Mandela, and I'll be Thatcher. And wow. It must have been incredible experiencing it that. It was an experience. He, Mandela had a very good sense of humor. So, you know, he said, we've been struggling for human rights, basic rights, for the last 20, 30 years, and so on, no progress. And I said, that's fine, Mr. Mandela. We agree with you about that. Now stop all this nonsense about nationalizing the mind. <laughs> <laughs> and he burst, into, burst out laughing, as he always did, you know, when you sort of challenged Mandela. He burst out laughing and said, well, you know, this was adopted before I went mm -hmm. to jail and it was fashionable then, <laughs> he said. And I said, well, it's not fashionable now. So <laughs> don't try arguing that with Thatcher. You know. No, so. it sounds like you had mm -hmm. a really incredible relationship with Mandela. Do you, do, is there one moment that stands out in your mind? Well, yes. I mean, after I met him to, three times in Soweto, mm -hmm. this, this tiny little house in Soweto, I said, next time, let's go to the best restaurant in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And he thought that was a great idea. He said, I haven't been to a restaurant for, for you know, 27 years. 
So I, I rang up, you know, five minutes before we arrived, I rang the owner to say, you know, I was bringing this terrorist to lunch. You know, he'd just <laughs> been released. There was a gasp at the other end of the phone. <laughs> here is this immensely dignified figure, you know, walking into the restaurant, mm -hmm. shakes hands with every single person dining there, most of whom had voted to keep him in jail, yeah. you know, mining executives and business executives and so on, and said, you know, I'm Nelson Mandela, who are you? And so on. And some, in some cases he said, I've heard all about you, because he read the newspapers in, in jail. End of the meal, he dived into the kitchen to, you know, shake hands with everybody who mm -hmm. prepared the meal. By the time he walked out of the restaurant, they were all Mandela supporters. You know, really? Yeah. Yes. So he, he was received yeah, with, no. with open arms. Well, he was, I mean, people were fascinated to meet him, yeah. obviously. You know, they'd heard about him, um, but didn't really know what he was really like. And Mandela had that effect. You know, he was able to gather people together to co-opt people. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did the same. General Phil Hune, who wanted to stage a right-wing coup, he invited him to tea. He poured the tea. A different way of and doing And it. said, why yeah. don't you join in the elections <laughs> instead? And Bill Hewn was so flummoxed that he did. <laughs> and of course, he <laughs> didn't win any votes in the elections. But this, this was what Mandela was mm. like. Yeah. I can imagine you mm. chuckling to yourself a lot yeah, during absolutely. that relationship. He was a unique uh, uh, political figure. You know, mm -hmm. no, no other leader like him.